up, y'all. Um, back with another prediction, man. UFC 248, Adesanya, Romero, the co-main as uh, Wei Li Zhang and uh, Joanna Yonjacek. I think that's how you say the name anyway. Um, I'm only going to talk about the co-main and the main event. Let's start with the co-main. Now you got the former, the former and most dominant champion in the strawweight division fighting as the challenger against the current champion and first ever Chinese UFC champion. You know, that's a... It's amazing. It's an amazing accomplishment in itself that uh, Wei Li Zhang, Wei Li Zhang, or whatever, became the first Chinese person to become a UFC champion. You know, I, I didn't know anything about her when she. Uh, when she was put up against Andrade, I wish I did. Dang, I wish I did. She's a. But uh, it was a phenomenal performance by Zon. Um, showed a little bit of her skill. She's obviously super well rounded. Uh, as with most of the Chinese fighters, she's got a background in Sanda. She's got good wrestling. You know, I mean, she's good everywhere. You know. Uh, it seems like, as far as striking her, like if you watch her older fights, she seemed to. There seemed to be a lot of emphasis on uh, Muay Thai. She, you, you know, if you, if you watch some of her older fights, she used a lot of kicks. She had, she preferred to either kick at distance and not be in punching range back in her earlier fights. She would swing to close the distance and get in the clinch and would use, you know, knees and elbows and look for takedowns. From watching her older fights, she's, she's, as an MMA fighter, she's always had good, good wrestling, good, uh, good top pressure. She's always had good top pressure, good with the submissions. But uh, now, nowadays, her uh, boxing has improved a lot since her older MMA fights. Uh, as we saw with the Andrade fight. And she's the first, I mean, another accomplishment to her, she's the first fighter, at least that I know of, that has ever finished Andrade. And everybody, like a few years ago, everyone, when everyone thought Andrade was, just had a chin of stone or whatever, just he couldn't, no one in that division could put her out or anything, so... So Zong obviously has power. She has good footwork. She can fight moving forward or backwards. I mean, she's a very good, very well-rounded fighter. But she's got... Uh, she's... She's got a lot to look at as far as a challenge in Joanna being the former champion. She's got the height and reach advantage. 
her background is, you know, kickboxing, Muay Thai, but the style she uses for MMA is very grounded in boxing fundamentals. You know, if she always fights behind her jab and she sets up every and she sets up her kicks with punches unless she knows she can if she knows the distance or whatever if she knows the distance of her opponent she'll throw uh naked kicks but generally it's got the and it's mostly because you know how fast she is you know before she's like if she's not the fastest, she's definitely one of the fastest in the division. Excellent takedown defense. You know, fighters have been able to take her down before, but no one's been able to keep her down except, you know, well, Claudia did, I think, in both fights. She was able to keep her down. And then... But other than that is Valentina, and that was at 125. So, definitely, I mean, Valentina is a bigger woman. So, uh, uh, I don't see if Zong would be able to take her down. I don't see her keeping her down. Not for long. Um, I think... Zong has to be on the back foot in order to have a chance. She has to be on the back foot and let Yoana come in and uh, look to counter Yoana. It's like the, that's the best, to me, that's like the only way I see a potential victory for her. And she, she has knockout power. She could potentially hurt your line but when when Zong is fighting in combination when she's striking in combinations her head's on the center line so, and she'll have to get in on your honor which is no easy task and at the end of the day I think your is going to retain the belt so my prediction so my prediction for the fight is Joanna. Now for the main event is you know Adesanya versus uh, Romero. You know everybody's been saying this is a fight Adesanya should avoid at all costs. <clears throat> is Romero? Yeah, I mean, they've been saying he's, he's the fighter he should avoid at all costs. And a lot of people believe that if he fought him before he fought for the belt, he would have lost that fight. I'd say, you know, it's possible. I mean, but that's not what happened. He fought for the belt. He got the belt. And now he wants to face his biggest challenges in the, in the division, so... You know, as far as for me, you know, I have a lot of respect for Adesanya for doing that. Now, his opponent, Romero. I mean, he's a Cuban. He's the Cuban missile that can go off at the drop of a pin, you know. Freak athlete, very, very experienced and high level wrestler. I'm pretty sure he's taken down everyone he's fought at least once, if not more. I, I think he, he was able to hold down Wideman in the second round. Uh, he, I can't remember how far in into the fight it was, but he was able to hold Wyman down. He and the thing about Romero is he likes to put his opponents in, into a false sense of security. 
So he'll be he'll go at a real slow pace and whatever. Get opponents used to that pace, and when he sees an opening, he explodes on it. So whether it's a flying knee, an overhand left, or a shot, um, he's also a dude that you know the closest anyone's gotten to knocking him out. Well, Rob, Robert Whitaker, he hurt him and. In the second fight. I can't remember the first fight all that well. I didn't watch it. I haven't seen it in a while. Like maybe a year or so. <clears throat> maybe like a year or so. And. Uh, you know. Paulo Costa. He heard him in that fight. And a part of what makes Yoel so scary for guys, the the fact that he he wants to surprise people with his explosions also leaves him vulnerable in situations. Just like well, it's not it's kinda like the same thing with uh, Tyron Woodley. You know, they're it's like part of the reason why they fight like that is also because they're pacing themselves. They don't want to blow their, you know, they don't want to spend all their energy on an attack or on an, you know, like an assault that probably won't work, you know. They want to get their opponents with something that they don't see coming, especially with Romero because he'll throw anything. Especially if he's desperate, he will throw anything. Spinning, you know, spinning back kicks, will kicks if you if he if he feels like he has to, you know, back fists. And we've seen him hurt people with anything he lands on people. He's hurt people, so he's definitely got the power to knock out anyone in the in the division. But against Adesanya. I mean, he's facing a master class in striking, you know. Obviously, everyone knows about Adesanya's kickboxing uh, past. Everyone, you know, and the dude's a master of of a broken rhythm, you know. He'll give you all kinds of looks. Not just with his lead, not just with his hands, also with his, with his legs. Act like he's gonna throw a leg kick or look at your head and spin like and spin like he's gonna throw something high and just kick you in the leg or something. So he, a part of his his uh, skill as a striker is. is uh, he makes you think so much. And that's something I see being a problem for Romero in this fight. Because I, I, I believe Romero's going to, you know, he's going to fight like he generally does. You know, has that slow pace and look look for the openings to explode on, whether it's a strike or a shot. I believe Romero will be able to take Israel down, especially if he's exploding. I don't know. I don't know if he'd be able to keep him down. And the reason why I say that is because Israel's been improving in his grappling. We see it in every fight. Every fight that he's had, he's constantly been improving as a fighter. Or as a complete mixed martial artist, if you will. So, uh, I, I could see him, even, 
even if Romero does take him down, I could see him scrambling for different, you know, submissions. It is also possible that Romero stu stuffs that and, uh, you know, keeps postured up. If he's postured up on top of Israel, that's trouble for Israel, obviously. You know, he starts raining down uh, Thor's hammers and, yeah, I mean, it could be over like that. But Romero seems to have fallen in love with striking with people, you know. And if he's on the back foot, if he's, uh, what's it called? If he's, you know, if he's, you know, moving with his back towards it, practically on the cage, most of the fight looking for his openings to explode on Israel. You know, Israel's movement, both with his footwork and with his, you know, head movement and everything, it's it's so sleek. I think he, I think he'll just he'll be able to pick his shots. Um and he'll have I think he'll have Romero desperate. If Romero's just if Romero's looking to knock him out, he'll have him. He's gonna be a phantom in there, and uh, uh, Israel's gonna be a phantom in there, poking and prodding. Making Romero think, and uh, just touch you know. Just touching, just touching him up. I don't, I don't see him knocking Romero out, especially with how dangerous he is. He's gonna, I, I expect him to play it relatively safe. Just, I, I can see that fight going to this, the distance. You know, I, as far as the prediction, you know. I I I'm going with uh, Israel. I think he keeps Romero guessing, and he l touches and lands on Romero constantly. Yeah, obviously it's possible for Romero to get you know it's a fight. Anything can happen. One shot from Romero ends the fight. One clean shot. Could probably, would possibly end the fight. I'd say would definitely end the fight if it's clean, you know. But, uh, is, yeah, if it's clean, it could end the fight. But, I, like I said, I see Israel being a phantom in there, and Romero will be just swinging at the bleachers. When he explodes. And I. You know. I just see him getting touched up. For five rounds. Anyway that's my breakdown. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a little. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I, man I just can't wait for these fights. Man. I probably won't watch until like Sunday or whatever, but uh, I hope the rest of you enjoy it, and uh, take care.